Well hello and welcome once again to the Walters and Stanton video channel. Every so often I get a question about VSWR meters and how they're not performing as expected. Now there's two questions that basically keep coming up. The first one is that I've got an internal VSWR meter in my transceiver and it's not reading the same as my external VSWR. And the second, perhaps more curious one, is that I've got an internal VSWR meter and an external one. When I take out my external VSWR meter, I get a different reading on my internal VSWR meter. Isn't that curious? Well, let's deal with these two questions. First of all, I'm going to put up on the screen a drawing of the path that the signal takes from your transceiver to your antenna. And we go from left to right. First of all, you'll see the internal VSWR meter. Then next comes the internal ATU. And the signal from the internal ATU is fed to your external VSWR meter and on up to the antenna. The first question, why am I getting different readings? Well, if you turn off your internal ATU and then check, you'll probably find that both meters read approximately the same. So what is actually happening is when you use your internal ATU, it's effectively fall in the transceiver into thinking you've got a perfect match on your antenna because basically what the internal ATU does it, it, it tunes out the reactance that's causing the higher VSWR and the internal meter then says okay fine that's great and the signal trundles out through the ATU but then it meets the actual real life bit of coax in which you've inserted your external VSWR meter. Now, the problem that you had with higher than normal or higher of VSWR still exists on the external cable. That internal ATU has no effect whatsoever on the VSWR of your antenna. All it does is falls the internal a, uh, a VSWR motion into thinking you've got a good match and that allows the transceiver to deliver full power. So full power is coming out of your ATU, your internal ATU, but then it meets the real life world where the VSWR hasn't changed at all. So you've got two readings and both readings are correct. The internal VSWR meter says, yep, you've got a good match now, I'm going to de deliver full power. The external VSWR meter says, oh, sorry, chum, you've still got a VSWR and you're going to lose a bit of power up the coax. So you will get two different readings simply because they're both right. One is reading the internal VSWR before the ATU and the other one is reading the real life world after the ATU. So one lesson to learn is that your internal ATU doesn't get rid of VSWR. It fools the transceiver into thinking there's a perfect match. That allows it to deliver full power, but the VSWR is still there. Now, let's deal with question two. Why, when I remove my VSWR meter, my external VSWR meter, does it affect the internal VSWR meter? Well, this is a problem that probably a lot of stations get, they may probably not have noticed it. What actually happens is that with coax feed antennas, almost always you'll get common mode currents flowing down the outer of the coax. And this, this always affects the VSWR meter. All VSWR meters I've come across are affected to a greater or lesser extent. So why does it 
make a difference when you take the VSW R meter out. Well, what actually happens, if you imagine that this current coming down the outside of the coax, it's, 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 a, it's a sine wave really, and it goes from point of maximum current to maximum voltage, maximum current to maximum voltage. Now, if you remove the VSW R meter, you're actually changing the length of the coax slightly. And you'll get exactly the same effect if you change the length of the coax. In other words, if you left both VSW R meters in, the internal one and the external one, and then you cut a bit of coax off and connected it back to your uh, external VSW R meter, almost certainly you'd find it a change value. Now the VSW R hasn't actually changed. Well, what's actually happened, as you shorten the coax or you lengthen the coax, the value of that voltage will change. And the value of that voltage changing upsets the VSW R meter. Now, there's a very simple answer to all these problems, and I've mentioned it time and time again, is that put a common mode filter in your coax, and it's as simple as getting a ferrite core and winding three or four turns of the coax round the ferrite core, and you'll find the problem goes away. It's that simple. You can, if you like, coil the, the coax up, put I don't know, eight or ten turns on a two or three inch diameter, former that will tend to uh, improve it but i always favor a, a, fer a ferrite core with three or four turns of coax around the ferrite core you'll kill off the common low current and you'll find that all of a sudden everything reads correctly so that's the answer to question one and question two i hope it clears it up short video but it's an important point as usual enjoy your ham radio and i'll see you in the next video bye